Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wookie and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. What Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a show in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves, our livelihoods, and our well-being. Well, not our livelihoods. Well, I guess our lives are our livelihoods. <laughs> when yeah, you think about yeah. Yeah. Our, our emotional well-being. <laughs> our emotional well-being on going over every single Shonen Jump anime that is available to, available to us in English, starting with the main series being Gintama, which we will get back to soon enough, I swear, and the other two series on the side being Jujutsu Kaisen and Kuroko's Basketball. I swear to God, we'll go back to Kuroko's Basketball. I watched the episodes. We just need to find time. <laughs> But life, thankfully, life be like that. Life do be like that. But thankfully, thank God, uh, the 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 third series is ongoing and only one releases once a week. Uh, yeah, that is good. <laughs> so we're here to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen season two, going starting with we already did episode twenty five, going episode twenty six, and this releases on the week when a new episode comes out. So you can have plenty of time to check out the previous episode before you come in here. And hear what we have to say about... Before we come in here and say, man, that episode was really good. <laughs> and that's what we're going to be doing today. Are you ready, Zen? I am ready. Perfect. I will be handling the breakdown of this one. And we'll be talking about episode 26, Hidden Inventory, part 2. Before we begin, I saw some people not being a biggest fan about the fact that all the episode titles are just called <laughs> the previous thing, part 2. What do you feel about that, Zen? Uh, I'm okay with it. I don't... Who reads the fucking episode titles? Us? When we do Gintama? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do, but it's not... like They're not Gintama titles where it's like the sweetest ham sandwich is made on the 14th of July <laughs> when the rain has just fallen. Like, you know what I mean? Like, A man wets his pants twice on Tuesdays, but only three <laughs> times on Saturdays. So, <laughs> it is an interesting thing because I do understand on the one hand like I love the episode titles but also all the episode titles I'm used to them doing it in like Dragon Ball style where it's like they've beaten Frieza next episode Krillin fucking dies <laughs> <laughs> yeah return of Frieza <laughs> Krillin dies and Goku goes Super Saiyan it's like well that's the entire episode <laughs> thank you for telling yeah. me it in the title <laughs> the English ones were really bad it was literally like uh Goku, the legendary Super Saiyan, like, before anything happens at all. It is. Like, oh, red. He died. Like, literally, like, actual, like, the finals. It's like, will Vegeta be able to beat uh, Majin Buu? Next episode, the final stand of Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, I know what happens now. Thank you very much for telling me. <laughs> It is interesting. Um, I can understand it, but at the same time, with some of the things that are happening in this anime, it's best to just kind of keep it as vague as possible, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, we don't need a fucking Gojo get field on Halloween episode <laughs> title. Find out next episode. <laughs> Gojo gets sealed. <laughs> that be such a hilarious title. Actually... They should, well, at the end of these episodes, we should try and figure out what's the best way to spoil this episode and give it a real official title about, in a way that completely <laughs> spoils everything that happened in the episode. We'll figure that out as we go through the summary, but let's go through the summary. And if you have a perfect title that completely spoils the episode, feel free to leave it down below. <laughs> let's get into the plot details. So... Uh, we cut back to what was happening previous episode, where the Q guys were attacking... Uh, one of them is being, like, restrained by a cursed spirit who's, like, really into kissing and licking. Um, and they say to... He says to... Uh, Ghetto. He says to Ghetto, Oh, just wait until Bayer is here. He's the strongest Q soldier of them all, and he's gonna make you regret this. And he shows him a text of Gojo, who has already beaten Bayer. And he goes, Oh, I guess it's over. And that's the end of the Q organization, and that's the opening of the episode. <laughs> Just to let you know, these guys did not mean shit. Uh, Shui, Shui Kong, apparently that's his last name. He's a middleman for the Time Vessel Association. He goes to uh, find Toji, who is at a racetrack just enjoying the uh, horse races, as you do in Japan. They love horses over there. 
uh, and they hire him to basically go hunt the star uh, plasma vessel. And he says, okay, sure, no problem, I can do that. And they give him a deposit, um, to like, they give him an early deposit on finding her. Uh, he ends up losing the bet on the race, and he's about to go leave. And before he leaves, he asks them, like, hey, how's a Megami doing? And then Toji goes, like, I don't know who that is. Don't ask me about that. <laughs> I, I have no idea who the fuck that is. Uh, we cut back to the hotel. Um, Gojo and uh, Ghetto are just kind of like talking to each other um, about whether they should take her to the hospital. They wish they could use reverse curse technique on her, like sh- like how Shoko does, but um, they she's they say she's terrible at explaining how it actually works, and they cut to her explaining, and she's like, "You gotta go like, woo, 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 and it just works." <laughs> Uh, Rico wakes up, and for some reason, Gojo decides that this would be a perfect time to just kind of princess carry her, and he gets met by immediately getting smacked in the face (laughs) for trying, as he calls him, like, you, she still thinks that she's in danger, um, they try and calm her down, and she says to Ghetto that you have weird bangs, and then her caregiver comes in as they're, like, stretching her, like, bull, or I guess bullying her is the, the, the right way of saying it, but they're, like, definitely, like, torture rack, Trying to, uh, they find her annoying and they're just like messing with her, and it was pretty funny. Um, Rico ends up not being what they expected at all. They figured that they would be, she would be kind of like sad about being assimilated into Tengen, but Rico basically says, like, nah, most people would be, but not me. I'm gonna live forever. It's gonna be awesome. She's really hyped about, uh, being assimilated into Tengen and has no issues with it. Um, they continue to annoy her. They call her. She says she, they say she has no friends because of the way she acts. <laughs> uh, and her being called friendless is what finally gets her to be like, oh, wait, shit, I do have friends. And also I'm missing school. So at her request, they go to her school. Gojo says, this is stupid. We should be going to Jujutsu High. And he calls up the, um, the, the... I keep calling, want to call him Kiryu. He's not Kiryu. He just sounds like Kiryu. <laughs> Masamichi. The, uh, he, you talk about the, the principal? Yeah, the principal. I just keep principal wanting... Principal Yaga. <laughs> he's, he sounds like Kiryu. It fucks with my head. I just want to call him <laughs> Kiryu from that's, Yakuza. That's uh, Principal Principal Yaga. Principal that's Yaga. Man. There you go. Uh, Yaga says that Tengen says you have to just fully uh, follow her orders, whatever she wants. And Masato says that because Rico lost her family at a young age and he just wants her to kind of enjoy her last days as her friends because once she's assimilated, that's basically it for her. That's the end. So she should continue living the life the best that she can. Um, Gojo asks about, hey, how's the surveillance of the cursed spirits going? And he says, like, oh, I should be fine. They should tell if, if, if tell us if anything is wrong. And he immediately tells them, you need to go find her because two of them have been taken out already. Uh, as they go off to go do that, we cut back to Toji, who is eating at a restaurant while, again, watching more horse racing. It turns out he's posted a bounty on Rico using the deposit um, from the Time Vessel Association. And it's basically saying, like, hey... If you can get her dead or alive uh, for, I think it was $30 million? I think I put down the time here. Let me see. Uh, something crazy. It has to be $30 million. Did I not put down the stupid time? Let's go with $30 million. He's saying $30 million yen. <laughs> that's the bounty on her head, and you get her, and that's it. The dude says, like, hey, we did that, but you know that if any of them kill him, you're not getting that deposit back if they end up killing her. We need her. And he says, don't worry about it. As long as Gojo's around, they will never be able to kill her. And he asks the question, like, well, if that's... If you're saying that, then can you actually kill her if you can do it yourself? And he goes, like, eh, maybe. And (laughs) they leave it at that. They leave it at that. Um, He goes to go leave the restaurant. Um, as he's leaving, there's a real funny scene where, like, he pushes over a guy while he's talking on the phone, and the guy tries to be like, hey, and then he immediately just, like, ducks down and just stares at him, and that's enough to make him stop talking. Um, they also do explain a little bit more about Gojo and about how he's the first person to inherit both Limitless and Six Eyes in hundreds of years. Um... 
which is something that will be important if you've ever been wondering, hey, what's up with his powers? You learn a lot more of them throughout here. And yeah, and they they go off and he calls. They we cut back to Rico at school. Um, they have basically like divided up forces. Two of them, um, Ghetto is going one way, and Gojo and the maid are going another way. I think. Uh, Geno ends up fighting an old man who fights with like two Shikigamis, and as they're fighting them, it's a it's a really cool f- uh, cool fight between them because there's a part in it when the old man tries <laughs> jumps him, tries to uh, blindside him through the window, and when he jumps through the window to kind of surprise him, he, he suddenly sees a dog, and he goes like, "Whoa, it's that dog! This is the only friend I ever had from many years back." And he looks back and he goes like, "Why am I seeing you here?" And he realizes, oh, it's because my life is flashing before my eyes. And we cut to him getting completely <laughs> fucked up in the battle scene. <laughs> so, so well done on this part. I was like, oh, that's such a <laughs> good ass way to show this guy had no chance. Life literally flashed before his eyes. Um, so he beats the old man down and he asks him whether or not he's associated with Q or with the, the Time Vessel Association we cut back to gojo who is running to rico's class who's in her music class and there's like a kind i thought it was ave maria but it's not ave maria it's like some kind of oh holy kind of song at least that's what it sounded like to me maria that's what i thought it was riddler (laughs) school (laughs) yeah the riddler in the background going oh maria (laughs) Uh, he finally interrupts, uh, he finds her, and he opens it in a super dramatic fashion. Of course, Gojo is an extremely hot man, so a bunch of, uh, schoolgirls see him and are immediately flipping their shit. They're saying, oh my god, and they assume that that's a, her boyfriend. And she goes like, no, 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 he's my cousin, trying to make, uh, not trying to reveal what he actually is, because like, no, no, it's my cousin, it's fine. And they immediately ask him, like, oh, my God, can you take off your glasses? And he goes, yes, of course. And he does, like, a Vishonen-type intro as he removes his glasses to reveal his eyes as all the girls swoon for him. Uh, Eventually, the teacher gets involved, and she says, like, this is very unbecoming about you girls, and you can't just come barging in here. And she immediately tries to pick him up and give 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 him her phone number. Uh, and all of the girls are immediately like, hey, that's cheating. You can't do that. I've lost so much respect for you going for a younger man. And she goes like, whatever. What <laughs> Do you have a problem with, uh, what, what is her name? Kari Genji, which is, of course, a reference to everyone's favorite Japanese tale, The Tale of Genji, which is actually a, a book written by Murasaki, Murasaki Shikabu. I know this because it's in Fago. <laughs> Once again, showing that my Fago knowledge has helped me out in the second time in Shonen Archive explaining a Japanese reference. Both this and Gintama, let's go. Anyway, <laughs> cut through that. Um, he's able to get her out there. They start leaving, and he picks her up, and they fly t- in the air, and they get attacked by this guy, a cursed user with a bag over his head. And he, the guy in the bag in his head is wondering if that's the target. Uh, he fights the maid and he fights uh, Ghetto for a bit. And while they're fighting and they subdue him, he's able to let slip like, okay, yeah, that's the actual target. And he says something like, hey, 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 so that is the 30 million target, 30 million dollar target with the bounty on her head. And he leaves and then they go like, okay, she has a 30 million dollar <laughs> bounty on her head. <laughs> It's a more like cronk ass like ah yes the girl the girl with a bounty the thirty million bounty I must go now <laughs> the bounty for the girl the girl's bounty <laughs> the one with thirty million dollars I must go now <laughs> he leaves and he tells him like okay this is what's happening that's why there's so many cursed dudes coming after her they're not associated with them at all they're just here to fight uh, and pick collect the money. Uh, Gojo starts fighting this guy, and we learn that the the other guy has a curse technique. They are wondering if they're Shikigami, but they're not. It turns out that he just has a cloning technique, and he can kind of go between the clones. And if one body ends up being bad, then it it kind of they're like they're all his body, but he can make it so that one of them is the clone body in case of any body yeah, that he is like, his real. Uh, he gets to choose which one is his real body, like whenever he wants to. Yeah, 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 basically. 
Um, so Gojo starts fighting these clones. I'm going to put a qu- fight in quotes. He really just kind of messes with this guy. He like lifts her <laughs> with one hand up into the air. And they try and punch him, and it just doesn't reach him. This is when he finally explains, all right, here's what my cursed ability is, which is infinite. And which makes it so that if anything tries to go uh, towards him, it just won't work. It will slow down. It will never even reach him. Kind of like you can never reach infinity. And then he starts explaining his other curse technique as he starts fighting all of them. And there's a really funny scene that when he's going for him, he tells her to, hey, watch your head. As he just kind of like slowly advances towards the window. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Explaining to him what he can do. And it looks like he's about to completely like... Uh, destroy this man by uh, hitting him with a curse technique point at point blank range but right before he does it it doesn't work and he goes oops it failed and he punches him in the head and knocks him out instead <laughs> um and he's basically go just says like ah, i haven't mastered that yet and he i think that was him trying to use his reverse curse technique um and that's basically it and i believe that's Okay, she gets a... Oh, no. Then we end it with the, a message saying that Masato has been kidnapped. And that's where the episode ends. And yeah, that's basically it. That's episode 26. Zen, how do you feel about it? Uh, this episode has two of my favorite like combat gags in it. Um, the sequence where the old man sees his childhood dog. And he's like, oh my god, it's my dog. Like... Oh, you're my best friend of all time. What's going on? And then it's just him getting his absolute shit wrecked by Ghetto. As he's the uh, I don't know if you remember that sequence in the manga, um, but it is like the the page of him seeing the dog is like a full page thing. It's like the top of the page, and then he gets like panels petting the dog, and he's like talking about it. And then the last panel is him going like, "Hmm, why why is this happening?" And then the page turn is him getting he, like his shit destroyed. <laughs> so it's all one page of the dog flashback, and you don't see the the actual like payoff of the joke until you turn the page. So <laughs> funny. I do remember that. I did kind of remember when I saw the dog. I was like, oh, I remember where this is going. <laughs> this is pretty good. Uh, um, and I also really like Gojo uh, fighting the clone guy, and he gives the big like curse technique reversal, like red blast, and it like. It shines the red light, and it like looks like it's going to explode, and it's the exact same visual as when he uses it on Jogo in season one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it just vanishes <laughs> and fizzles out, and he just punches the guy. <laughs> He's like, "All right, well, <laughs> I tried. Oops, I failed." It's a very uh, he does like a silly face too as he just goes to punch him out. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Ah, oh, rats, oh man, nah, darn." It doesn't work out for him at all. Uh, yeah, those are two very good gags. I also, oh, in general, I really like this episode because there's a lot of just like silly, goofy stuff. I really liked it at the beginning where they just, <laughs> after they find her too annoying and they just start stretching her for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just like start bullying her. Yeah, and it was over such like a, a, a stupid thing. He was like, oh, whatever, your bangs suck. And then he's just like, and then immediately cut back to them bullying her. <laughs> <laughs> that was where it took it too far I also love the scene where Gojo like very dramatically takes his glasses off and he's like soaking up all the attention yeah it's... <laughs> again really every good. single like amazing moment from Gojo is like 10 times funnier when you remember the mangaka hates him and it's just, I fucking like, hates him yeah hates his guts and he's, <laughs> he's like this the is the worst been... character in this in the series He's like, oh, what would this idiot do in this scenario? I got it. Oh, my God. Isn't he just terrible? Isn't he the worst? And everyone just like, oh, we love him so much. <laughs> look at it. Look at him go. <laughs> yeah, it's always how it is. Like, uh, I feel like every time he writes him, he's like, oh, they're going to hate him now. Look how much of an asshole he is. And then everyone's like, oh, he's the best. <laughs> <laughs> look how awesome he is. It really is. It's really funny how like he does do specific things that it seem very tailored to make someone hate him, but only a very specific person to hate him, and it's him. He's like, I hate a person like this, and he starts acting like it, and then everyone else just absolutely loves him. It's super funny. 
<clears throat> it's maybe one of my favorite writing things about him is <laughs> as every annoying thing that makes me like him is just in my head is going like I don't think this is the way it's supposed to be. I think you're actually supposed to find him kind of annoying. <laughs> Doesn't work out that way. It doesn't help that he's also just an extremely pretty man. So the gag just works. <laughs> and it also it also did remind me of back when um that the fact that he was willing to do it so quickly it reminded me of the 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 Juju stroll where he was willing to do it at a drop of a, of a hat when he thought that Megami was getting uh hit on or he was hitting on someone. <laughs> <laughs> This is a man who knows how to weaponize his looks, and he knows that he looks good, and it's just really funny. Um, yeah, I like that stuff. Uh, I like the silly stuff. Yeah, this is a really good... And the the two action stuff that we got here, I felt... Not technically three, if you count the... The maid fighting the dude with the uh, with the cursed energy and, like, hitting him in the nuts with the, the mop as a fight scene... <laughs> Yeah, they use the same uh, audio cue as the Chainsaw Man nut shot, don't they? Yeah, they do. Oh my god, you're yeah. right. Yeah, it's the same sound as when Denji kicks um, Aki in the balls. Oh, perfect. That's what we need now. More than ever, we need to be united in ball kicking. <laughs> it's the universal language. But I like that little fight, and I like the the fight at the end where he's like showing off his stuff, especially because you get to see next to someone like after the the build up in the beginning where he's just like, ah, it's fine. Even though we put this in there, no one's actually going to be able to kill her. And then they show it like, yeah, no, no one's going to be able to touch or get near him at all <laughs> as long as he's like literally right directly next to her. <laughs> it feels impossible. I also like that he's giving, like, a kind of, like, villain breakdown of what his abilities are. As he's, like, slowly advancing for him. I think it's... I think, again, ever since you mentioned it, like, yeah, the way Gojo is also kind of written is that it feels like he's actually, like, a horror villain. In the way that he explains how badly you've screwed up and how strong he is and how just terrifying he is to actually fight. It's very interesting to see. Yeah, it's like, he's always like uh, Jason, where, like, you, no matter what you do, he's just coming. <laughs> like, you can't... Yeah, He's just still there, still fucking you up. You can't do anything about it. <laughs> nope, nope. There's absolutely nothing you can do. It's he. It's like fighting. Do you remember in? Obviously, you've seen Jason uh, takes Manhattan, right? The Friday <laughs> the Thirteenth movie where he goes to New York for a brief bit. There's a fight scene in that. Uh, movie where a black dude is fighting Jason and he's like boxing him and he's like punching him and punching him and punching him <clears throat> and I think this is like a, fi a almost a five minute long scene where he's fighting Jason and Jason's not fighting back and then he eventually gets tired and he does one final punch and the guy goes huh huh and Jason like holds him and then he revs up a punch and he solidly clean punches his head clear off and he goes into the dumpster <laughs> That's kind of what it feels like to fight Gojo. <laughs> yeah, that's what this vibes are. 100%. Those are the vibes. So, yeah, I thought this was a very enjoyable, continuing to enjoy, uh, can, continues to be an enjoyable episode. I'm really interested to see where it kind of goes from here, even though I already know where it goes from here. But in terms of the actual build up to it, I thought they're, I think they're doing a very good job of it. I also like Toji's just kind of like, ah, you know, I might win. Like, his kind of response of, like, yeah, I can, yeah, I can do it. No, no, you know, whatever. It shows that he's also, like, a gambling man. So he might actually be gambling on the fact about whether or not he could actually beat him himself. And I think that's probably the thing that's more interesting to him. Is like, ah, if there's a chance and there's a gamble, it could be a big payoff. So you know what? I'm going to do it. And I'm going to go for it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> we'll go for it. Um, and, yeah. Anything else specifically to say, Zen? Uh, not really. It's a, it's a good episode. I did see on Twitter, kind of spoilery, I guess, um, that we're going to get more anime-exclusive expanded stuff in the next episode. Really? Um, stuff that did not show. Yeah, so apparently we're going to see the, the rescue of, um, of Misato. In the, um, in the manga, we don't see it. Hmm. We see that she's kidnapped, and then we just cut to it's already over. And they're like, yay, you're saved. Because <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it was just that good. Um... But in the anime, apparently, we're going to see them rescue her, which is pretty cool. Okay. Do you think... 
So when he made the now I'm going into the headspace of how Jujutsu Kaisen is written because there's like a lot of anime content who's like oh yeah we just didn't see it and when I'm reading Jujutsu Kaisen I'm not really thinking about like oh I didn't get to see that it's fine but then when the anime comes around and they add it I'm like oh that's cool I get to see that how do you how do you think that actually ends up working out where it where in most manga or anime if they left out something as important as that I just be kind of like actively annoyed but in here it ends up working what do you think that is. I don't know. Um, I don't even know how they decide, like, what, when to and not to do that, you know? Yeah. Well, I think anime nowadays has more input from, like, the mangaka mm-hmm. involved in creating it. Like, I don't think... At least if you hear Toriyama talk about the Dragon Ball anime, it sounds like he had basically nothing to do with it. Because mm-hmm. every time he talks about it, he's like, I didn't really like <laughs> this about <laughs> it. Uh, so it, it kind of sounds like he just didn't really have anything to say. Whereas nowadays, it seems like the mangaka are generally more involved in like the process of, of creating it. So I assume Akatami was was like, yeah, you put this in, or whatever. Or if they were like, hey, can we put this in? And he was like, yeah. Um, I guess just to to make it not because you know in a in a written like drawn format, j- jumping like that, like a, a big jump cut, isn't super jarring. I guess they feel like in an animated format, it would be harder for people to follow, like, maybe digest. Yeah, hmm. <clears throat> it is interesting. It is especially because this kind of thing. It's, it's really interesting to me that it just doesn't really bother me that much with Jujutsu Kaisen, but it has bothered me with other stuff in the past, where either they added stuff like uh, <laughs> uh, you, there was a lot of talk about specific adaptations. What do you hate the most? Like. Promise Neverland is like maybe the number one where it's like. This well, the Promise Neverland just became a completely different series, didn't it? It, it did. <laughs> I heard that it was like after the first arc, it was like nothing like the manga at all. No, they went a completely different route from everything. They didn't bother to do any of the other stuff, but there's plenty of other examples of like, um, what is it? I think where it's like they just deviated enough that it completely changes it, and it doesn't really make sense with the actual course material. And I, the one example, oh, I swear it's not on purpose. The one, the one I always think about is that in the the first ever Fate Stay Night, and the only time we've ever gotten one of the ropes uh, animated was the Dean version, and it's infamously a terrible version of it because it takes from all existing routes, and it's the only a version of that route we've ever experienced. <laughs> And we've only ever had animated, and if and they've had people constantly ask them, "Hey, hey, can you reanimate this? Because this doesn't follow it at all, <laughs> or it changes yeah, enough that's that it's awful. confusing." Yeah, and then you wonder how stuff like Hunter Hunter happens, where they're like, "Oh, this is amazingly popular. Everyone wants more. I guess we'll just stop and not like." Because I feel yeah. like that. I mean, I guess Togashi probably has enough clout to just say no, but. I feel like that's a situation where the anime studio would absolutely push to be like, let us just make stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because it, we're making a shitload of money, so why would we just stop here? Yeah. Um, it's like Naruto, for example, with its, like, infinite filler. They never yeah, wanted well, him Naruto, to leave I mean, game. that's back from the era where yeah. every anime had to drop an episode every week, even if it wasn't ready. So, like, One Piece obviously has as many episodes, basically. I think it has more episodes than it has manga chapters. It does. And it has a shitload of manga chapters. So, I mean, like... Um... To, to the point where there's people who have done specific compilations where it's like, this is all you actually need from these specific Yeah, seasons. it's like... A, it, it, usually, like with Naruto, the filler count's, like, insane. It's like half the episodes are skippable. Yeah. Um, Which, of course, we don't plan to skip any of them when we get to Naruto. We're going to be covering every single one of them. I kind of like at least some of the narrative. Some of it's stupid, but some of it's pretty good. And some of it ends up becoming canon later, doesn't it? Uh, that I don't know. That doesn't. Some of the stuff with the tailed beast is because some of the other tailed beast users we never hear about. But I want to say one of them. Oh, the like the the yeah, like the three tails and the four tails and stuff. Yeah, I remember because I was like, well, I don't have to worry about this because it's not canon. And then in the manga, eventually they get name dropped and they're shown, and I'm like, what the fuck? That the, so that is canon. <laughs> I was told I could ignore this. <laughs> now I'm just kind of annoyed. <laughs> but I think that w- they probably ascended to the point where they were like popular because I remember those characters were like getting added into like the the gotcha games as like multiple SSR characters and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, yeah, they are. I know one of the in Naruto Blazing, one of the better characters for a while was an anime exclusive tailed beast guy. But I guess Naruto fans would probably fight you on what technically is and isn't canon. 
And I don't want to fight any Naruto fans. They're all yeah, I don't really give a shit what counts as Naruto canon, to be honest. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. Whatever. <laughs> we'll deal with it when we actually have to do a redone of, of, of Naruto. <laughs> Whenever we decide to push the button on that. <clears throat> But anyway, yeah, it's something interesting to think about. I always think about it whenever it's, like, um, when it's specific cutting of stuff. Some people are very specific about, like, if you add something or if you cut something, it starts fights immediately. Like, uh, as good as Kakarot is and the way it looks like, the, the Dragon Ball fans are immediately, like, how could you skip this moment? This moment was so good, and it's so, like, integral to everything. But then I try and think about it in terms of, like, someone who has never actually experienced Dragon Ball. Like, obviously, the um, the moment where Vegeta does the, what is it, the Big Bang Attack on Cell? Is that what it is? The one uh, when he's fighting Perfect Cell for the first when time. He, when, oh, the Final Flash. Yeah, the Final Flash. They cut that in Kakarot. Um, that's they, so weird, because that's, like, the only cool thing Vegeta does in that arc. <laughs> it, it is. And that's what a lot of people were like. The the most famous example is Nano when he gets to that part and they cut the, his Vegeta moment. He like almost stopped playing the game because <laughs> he was just like so uh, offended by the fact that they would not include <laughs> such a hype Vegeta moment. And that's passion for a lot of well, people. Well, it is called Kakarot. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But also, Vegeta's <laughs> a main character. You play as Vegeta in Kakarot. <laughs> oh, that's what, yeah. Okay, that's a little weird. It is a little <laughs> if he's weird. playable, then that's a little weird. Yeah, but. I'm thinking of, like, the idea of skipping that, okay, we can just show, like, hey, this happens and it doesn't work out, and maybe in their mind it's like, well, nothing actually happens, and they're right about that. Nothing actually does happen, nothing is really advanced. Well, no, nothing v advances, but it's it's designed that way to sell, uh, well, sell. that's, that's going to be, yeah, to sell, sell as a, as a major threat, because you see Vegeta do this, like, because, you know, you just watched him fight Semi-Perfect Cell, which... That fight is more nothing than the final flash is, to be honest. Because that fight's like, you know, they're not going to kill Cell before he gets 18. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's just kind of fluff of Vegeta beating him up. Uh, it's um, for the Vegeta fans. As Tiro Toyama said that. It is. Like, this yeah, is for Vegeta the Vegeta gets fans. His, <laughs> his minor success before his inevitable <laughs> humiliation. Um, but the final flash is, like, a big deal because it, it's there to make you go, oh, Cell really is all that because we just watched what vegeta could do and now his strongest thing can't do anything um it's, it's important you gotta mm -hmm. especially dragon ball where every character has like the same abilities basically um you kind of have to be like uh oh this guy is strong now by having him beat up somebody else and it's usually vegeta it's the one who gets their shit kicked in for that he was so good at it he um, made it so any character that is designated as the vegeta of the group has to do the same thing <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's just become like uh, a role. It's like a character archetype. Like, who's the Vegeta of this series? Yeah, it's exactly. Like yeah, it's one hundred percent like that. <laughs> someone needs uh -huh. to, someone needs to take the fall on this one, and they also need to be strong, and they need to establish how good a person is, and that's typically what they do here. But yep. some, but some of the more modern ones don't really go to it. Funny enough, both Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen don't really have. They have like someone who would be considered a Vegeta but aren't actually on the same as Vegeta. Yeah, the, the the Vegetas of newer era stuff are usually just, like, friends, but kind of mean. Like, they're, they're the there's fusion. No, there's no one on the Vegeta Kaiba level of, like, dirty little hater. <laughs> you know? It's not, it's not like that anymore. They're like, if you combined Vegeta, Sasuke, and Softness, you would get the new flavor of what is a modern day... <laughs> Yeah, Vegeta yeah, it's like, like uh, rival, kind of edgy and sad, but also like still on the, the good guy side, very, very blatantly. Yeah, they're still like a team good guy, but they're not full on like mm -hmm. murdering dudes. They're not going on crazy yeah. murder sprees. <laughs> That's the main difference. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I think the perfect title for this episode before we end it would be. Uh, <laughs> Gojo just infinitely fucks up somebody. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like <laughs> Gojo goes infinite. <laughs> yeah, Gojo does an infinite. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. 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 Gojo, uh, thank you everyone for joining us for, for joining us for episode 26, Infinite Inventory Part Two, aka Gojo does an infinite. <laughs> we'll join us.
<laughs> next week where um let me tell you about what's coming up on next week for uh shonen archive so next week we are going to be able to talk about episode 27 and gintamo should show up not this saturday but next saturday before i leave for vacation on uh before i leave for vacation next week to vegas because i'll be off in vegas i'm gonna be um in Vegas because of Final Fantasy fourteen con that's happening. I'm not going to be at the con. I couldn't get a ticket in. So I'm just going to be hanging yeah, well, out with nobody friends. Nobody could get a ticket into that goddamn thing. No, but uh, a friend of mine did. Vio. Vio yeah, uh, I, I saw Vio got it, which is crazy. Yeah, she... But, uh, tickets, oh, but people like uh, were begging for resales of those tickets. Like anyone who wanted to scalp it, they were trying to pay like a shitload to get the tickets. Yeah, it was not easy. But let me tell you, we and our entire group got in except for me who does not play final fantasy 14 except for when i tried <laughs> <laughs> but they were like oh we're so sorry we couldn't get you a ticket Wokey." and i was like listen you guys actually care about this i care that you guys got it <laughs> that's the actual thing yeah yeah i mean because you're just going to hang out with like vo and them right yeah yeah so i'll be going hanging out with them i'll be around the con if you had it, if you want to if you're also doing the same you can find me at the pinball museum where I'll be <laughs> hanging out, playing some pinball as I wait for them to be ready. Yeah, uh, try not to spontaneously combust in Vegas. I hear it's going to be like 110 oh, as yeah. the coolest it, temperature it, while you're there. It's, it's looking pretty bad, but don't worry. I got everything planned to make sure I don't die in Vegas. It's not my first time I've gone to Vegas. And, uh, oh my, have I ever told you the Vegas story? No. Okay, well, congratulations, Shonen Archive. Here's the Vegas story. We went to Vegas a long time ago. <laughs> To go to a concert, I believe it was at the time. Uh, at the time, it was. I think it was. It was. It was for my sister. She really wanted to go. It was for Glee. It was a Glee concert, and we were going to Vegas for that. And we took our entire family: me, my mom, my dad, and my little brother. So we go to the concert, and our dad's gonna go meet us at the end of it, so he can go to the hotel and walk. Uh, we go to finish the concert. We're both pretty happy. We're walking. I see my dad. I'm like, oh, I'm going to play such the funniest trick. I'm going to put my thumb up to his neck to make it seem like I'm going to, like, uh, stab him. And then I'm going to say, hey, dad. And my sister's like, oh, that's so funny. Let's go. We're in a good vacation mood, right? We go up to my dad. I do that. And I go, hey, dad. And then he looks me in the most scared face in the world and says, I lost your brother. And then I go, <laughs> what? <laughs> you did what? <laughs> And like, and at this point, my brother was at least maybe eight years old. He was a kid. He was a child. He was a baby. And he's like, and he says, the first thing he says is, I lost your brother. And the second thing was, don't tell your mom. And, <laughs> and I looked at him and go like, dad, how could you lose the, how could you lose him? We're in Vegas. What are you doing? And he's like, no, no, no. It's a, and he's also, my dad also doesn't speak the greatest of English. So he's trying to explain his rationale while he's also freaking out. And we're doing all this. And we go like, okay, we're going to go look for him. And my dad has been very clear. He's like, did you tell, you haven't told mom? He's like, no, I haven't told her anything. We haven't done anything. And we're looking for him like crazy. And then my sister's like, I'm going to, I'm going to call mom. Cause she's the responsible one. I'm with dad. I'm like, okay, we won't call mom. And my, my sister's like, Oh hell no. We've been looking for him for how long? I don't know. We have to call mom. Otherwise we're all going to be, we're, none of us are going to be alive in Vegas. If we do not tell mom what happened immediately to her smallest child. And we call mom and we go like, uh, uh I forget how she said, he was like, is he with you? And she goes like, yeah. And we go like, what? He's like, yeah, he just showed up. And we're like, what? And then we're like, he's with them. So we go over there and he's like, where the hell were you? And he goes like, oh, I just made it here. Because he, apparently him and my dad got into an argument. And my dad, and <laughs> he didn't want to be there with him. But he was with him regardless because he wanted to just be out there. And, um... My brother says, like, can I go back? And he's, my dad's like, oh, yeah, sure, go back. Um, my brother, not really fully understanding sarcasm, goes like, okay, because he's like eight, and he decides that he's going to leave my dad, and he's going to go back to the hotel room, and he's going to figure out his way back there. And we're like, how how did you figure it out? He's like, well, I remember the way back. He's like, so how did you get on the elevator? He's like, well, I did it like uh, a sneaking mission, so I would only go in the elevator if I was the only person there to specifically avoid kidnappers. <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh my god this kid went on like a metal gear stolid mission <laughs> solid snaking is <laughs> <In fact, laughs> 
<laughs> and not really that, by the time he got there, he got, like, apple slices. He somehow fucking found a way to get apple slices <laughs> on the way back. <laughs> and that was the last time we ever went, went to Vegas. <laughs> So I'll be back there, and this time I'll be hanging out. So feel free to go join us. But don't worry, we will be able to continue on with Shonen Archive. And if you want, now this is we're doing the ending bit of the show. As always, you can go over to Zen's channel if you want to. If you want to, I'm going to be uploading videos. But if you want some more Shonen, <laughs> Shonen Jump style videos, then you're going to have to go to Zen for that one. Where Zen does Shonen and Chill, starting up with their season three. Am I right? Correct. First episode of season three just dropped. First episode of season three just dropped. Go check them out. Uh, and if you want more videos from me, you can stay on my channel here. I'm going to try and upload some other different videos. The Fago videos have uh, been doing extremely well. <laughs> yeah, so, so that one, have they they've been staying big, like that one that blew up? Yeah, they've been doing pretty good and consistently. So I'm just kind of like, okay, well, I didn't think it would get this far. So... <laughs> Uh, you know, there will be Fago videos out released, and there will also be other videos trying to do it. And it's similar to, uh, I'm trying to think of it as a way of, like, uh, effective Reaganomics. Trickle Down Wokenomics says that if one of the Fago videos does good, eventually those views, some of those views will have to trickle down to the others. <laughs> That's the way it works in the world, right, Zen? Absolutely. The, the math checks out. The math you can't test, argue it. Can't argue, you can't. You just simply can't argue with it. So uh, I'll be uploading that, and you'll feel free to see more of those videos. And as always, you can support Shonen Archive by leaving a like. As always, as I say every single time we do this, we don't ask for it too much because simply the Fago videos are doing so well on the channel that they fund doing these style videos, and I don't have to do anything <laughs> scummy for them. Because let me tell you, YouTube really wants me to put like fifty ads on Shonen Archive. <laughs> They're every single time I'm like. No, just two. <laughs> Only two of my Yeah, God. it's crazy. Well, I think they don't put all the ads on there that you see. I think those are just, like, places they could appear. I think that's what Dino told me. Yeah, well, Dino would know more about it. But the way I do it is, like, well, no, I only really need it for these two specific parts. Because if this is just doing it randomly, I'm not a big fan of someone of potentially seeing all that stuff and that be going down. But I don't know enough about YouTube. But either way... The fact that there's not that many ads on Shonen Archive, hopefully, is all thanks to the Fago videos doing so well. But if you do want to show support for the show, you can always do that by leaving a like, leaving a comment, or simply just watching. We enjoy talking about Shonen Jump stuff. It's like one of our most favorite things to do, and we will gladly keep doing it. Uh, and yeah, that's the end of Shonen Archive for this week, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Adios.